Today I am reviewing The Passion of the Christ, which was released in 2004. The film chronicles the final 12 hours of Jesus Christ's life. The death of Jesus is traditionally called the Passion, because passion is an old English word for suffering. Jesus Christ is played by Jim Caviezel, and the film is directed by Mel Gibson. Some fun facts about Jim Caviezel are that he is a devout Catholic who publicly opposes abortion, he has three adopted children, and he suffered many injuries during the making of the Passion of the Christ, including a shoulder dislocation, accidental scourging, hypothermia, he contracted pneumonia and was struck by lightning. Mel Gibson warned him about the danger of making this film, but he was talking about being blacklisted by Hollywood not actual physical harm. The entire film is subtitled because it is spoken in Hebrew, Latin and Aramaic. The film opens in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus is praying to God when he notices that Peter and company, who are meant to be keeping watch, have fallen asleep. At the same time, Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' disciples, is being paid by priests to give up his friend who was accused of blasphemy. Judas believes that Jesus is going to be a king on earth, not a king in heaven, so he agrees to point out the blasphemer because he thinks Jesus will reveal himself. It was prophesied that Judas would betray Jesus, but an explanation for Judas accepting money for handing Jesus to the Romans is that it's possible that as Judas was in charge of the disciples' treasury, he may have been planning to put the money into their kitty. Judas was the only disciple who was non-Galilean. He was a rebel hell-bent on freeing Palestine from the Romans. At the time of Christ, the Romans occupied Palestine and put puppet rulers in place, such as King Herod and Pontius Pilate, the governor. Judas takes the Roman soldiers to the garden and identifies Jesus by calling him Rabbi, which means teacher, and kissing his cheek. The disciples try to stop Jesus from being taken, and in the process, Peter cuts off one of the soldiers' ears. Jesus heals the soldier and says to Peter, he who lives by the sword will die by the sword. In another scene, Mary, the mother of Jesus, says to Mary Magdalene, Why is this night different to every other? And Mary Magdalene replies, Because once we were slaves, and we are slaves no longer. This exchange is a Passover ritual. The death of Jesus coincided with Passover. In the film, Mary Magdalene is portrayed as the adulteress whom Jesus saved from stoning with the lion, he who is without sin may cast the first stone. Jesus is brought before the high priest to answer for being a blasphemer. Claims are made about Jesus performing magic tricks to heal people and to cast out demons. It is said that he claims he is the bread of life and that the kingdom will be destroyed and then rebuilt in three days. Some people complain that this is a nighttime trial to eliminate members of the council. Jesus is asked if he is the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. Jesus says, I am. He is declared a blasphemer and is attacked by the crowd, whilst Judas hides in the corner. Peter stands by recalling telling Jesus that he would follow him anywhere, but looks at Jesus as if he doesn't recognise him. Peter is singled out as one of the disciples, but claims to not know Jesus. Jesus is brought before Pontius Pilate, the Roman appointed governor. His wife Claudia has a dream about Jesus and tells him that Jesus is holy and must be let go. When Pilate asks the priests what crime Jesus has committed, they claim he violated the Sabbath. Pilate asks, isn't he the prophet you have waited for? When Jesus speaks to Pilate privately, he is asked, are you the king of the Jews? What have you done? Are you a king? Jesus tells him he is the truth, and Pilate asks, what is truth? Jesus tells him, my kingdom is not of this world. This is probably the most important dialogue in the film. 
the man who has the power to condemn to death the man who is being pursued by an out-of-control mob, is put in the middle of a holy war that he wants no part of, and his wife disapproves. Pilate finds no reason to punish Jesus and tells the crowd that because he is Galilean, it is King Herod who must judge him. Herod is also a Roman appointed king and is portrayed as narcissistic, eccentric and extravagant. He is ridiculous and treats Jesus in the same manner. Herod asks Jesus to work a miracle for him, but concludes that Jesus is not guilty of a crime. He's just crazy. Pilate speaks with his wife about this man who was brought to him to be punished. He is concerned about truth. Claudia tells him, if you will not hear the truth, no one can tell it to you. Herod refuses to condemn Jesus and sends him back to Pilate, who was afraid of an uprising if Jesus is not put to death. So he must make a decision. The Roman governor pardons a prisoner every year, so Pilate gives the people the choice of pardoning Jesus or a rebel leader named Barabbas. Mob rule ensures the release of Barabbas. Now Pilate has a problem, because he has already given into mob rule once. Now they don't just want Jesus executed, they want him crucified. Pilate agrees to have Jesus publicly flogged. This is the most violent scene in the film. Jesus is nearly killed by the soldiers tasked with punishing him with whips and chains, until one of Pilate's aides, a soldier himself, intervenes and returns Jesus to Pilate. Pilate asks Jesus what he should do, to which Jesus replies, You have no power over me. It is he who is above who has delivered me to you. Pilate washes his hands and declares that it is the mob who wants to crucify him, so there is no blood on my hands. In other words, Pilate did not order the crucifixion, but he knew he was powerless to stop the mob. He had the power to condemn Jesus, but not to save him. The film attempts to be as true to life as the final hours of Jesus Christ's life would have been as recorded in scripture. The film goes for two hours, but it feels like three because of the attention to detail that was put into recreating Jesus Christ's final hours. The only part of the film that I didn't like was that it was made in biblical language. It was obviously made that way to be true to life, and if you speak these languages you wouldn't complain, but if you don't and you close your eyes for a moment of contemplation, you will miss the dialogue which in many cases is the most powerful element of the story which is why I have included so many quotations in this video. The film was shot in Italy and also stars Monica Bellucci as Mary Magdalene and Maya Morgenstern as Mary, Mother of Jesus.